Hi everyone, it's Kevin at Bear Creek. Welcome back. Uh, September 18th, 2020. Another beautiful, absolutely beautiful fall day here in Wisconsin. Uh, days like this, a reminder, beekeeping season is absolutely coming to an end. Very happy that, um, you know, I, I pretty much got all my beekeeping chores uh, done as far as the bees are concerned. Uh, I probably will have to, you know, splash some syrup on them um, in a week or two. Uh, maybe some open feeding uh, just to, you know, as the um, cells emerge in a couple of weeks, uh, allow them to backfill uh, those colonies with some syrup. But uh, the serious feeding is over. They're pretty well up to weight, but I do want them to, to backfill uh, the cells as the queens are really slow down. Um, but it's also a, a good time to reflect on the, the season that I've had here. Um, my honey production couldn't have been better. Uh, I wish the basswood would have uh, been, been better than it was. It was almost non-existent, but uh, other flowers uh, made up for it and, and actually I had and the bees made up for it too and I had kind of you know the best uh, bee or uh, honey production that I've had uh, since I've been doing this. Now that's not saying much I don't have a whole ton of colonies and I don't really want a whole ton of honey either. Matter of fact I have 10 or 11 supers sitting in my sunroom right now that uh, I still have to extract. I've just been waiting on that till I literally got rid of all my other honey first. And uh, I've sold a bit of honey, a um, couple cases now, and some gallons of honey. But uh, I still have some left, so I kind of want to wait until to extract that. But can't wait too long because it'll get cold and then I won't be able to extract it because the honey frames will get, uh, they won't be as warm, so I have to wait for a warm day. And get that extracted but yeah got to reflect on the beekeeping season overall wasn't too bad um, you know but one of the things that I really wanted to do and get going was you know my my thoughts on um, being self-sustainable you know grafting my own queens and producing uh, my own queens for survivability in the winter here, um, honey production, gentleness, things like that. But, you know, they have to survive the winter, number one. Uh, some of the things that I ran into this year as far as my grafting, because that's where it really all started. Um, you know, you do as much um, research as you can, try to get uh, the best equipment that you can, um, but it really boils down to... Uh, time and attention to detail. Um, now, you know, two years ago I, I attempted to do some grafting and it was a pretty much an utter failure for me. And, um, and, I, and I hadn't tried it again until this year. And, um, you know, I vowed to, to, to do better at it, but I got a new job and that, that took me 60, 70 hours a week away from and then when I was off I was scrambling to you know not only graft but also take care of the bees that I had you know get in there inspect them splits whatever I had to do um, you know put supers on queen excluders whatever I had to do and that that just take up took up so much of my time I had literally no time to do anything else and you know I still got to mow lawn and you know, do laundry and, and clean the house and all that other stuff that you just got to do. So you got to find the time, uh, number one, to graft. And um, in order to be self-sustainable, you really do um, need to get into um, grafting queens. Yes, you can do walk-away splits and be sustainable that way, uh, but you're not producing you're producing pretty inferior queens um, that might lay great for a year or something like that, but but uh, you know, they're they're more runty uh, type queens um, that they produce because they're emergency cells. They're not uh, um, grafted cells, which are you're grafting from the very very youngest 
uh, cells, you're creating cell builders where they put the most food in those queens to produce you some nice, big, viable queens um, that can hold a lot of sperma, a lot of sperm uh, from drones. That's what you're attempting to do. Um, this year, well, let's go backwards. I, uh, I have never been shy about about admitting uh, my failures because I think actually that's where we learn the most from it. And my failures this year from trying to raise queens uh, l was literally boils down to lack of attention to detail. Um, you know, it was never a case where I thought, you know, queen rearing was harder than it looked because I knew it was going to be difficult. Um, it's, it's, uh, you can have everything that you need, but if you don't pay attention to the details, you're not going to be successful uh, at raising queens. And you need to have the time uh, to have that attention to detail. Some of the things that I ran into that, that I failed in my attention to detail. Um, now, this year, my cell builder, I, 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 I built a, a decent cell builder this year. You know, I shook, I put uh, plenty of brood frames in uh, that I had uh, gotten from resource hives. I shook extra bees in. I had a very populated uh, cell builder. Um, and uh, so that wasn't really an issue at all. What my attention to detail lacked, well, let's just continue. So I built my cell builder, and that was good. Um, the grafting, um, that takes practice, and I'm not going to lie to you. It does get easier, and you have to find out what works for you. Um, for me, I attempted to use different tools for grafting. Number one, you got to have good light. It's very important to have good light where you're doing your work uh, so you can see. Number two, um, you know, you have to be able to see in your cells. So if you want to get a magnifier, that's great. Uh, I tried a magnifier, but uh, um, the focal point, you know, when you're when you're doing it is different when you're looking here to when you're grafting, so your your hand isn't exactly seeing right where you think you're going. Um, what I found that works is magnifying glasses. Uh, now these are my readers; these are 1.5s, and I use these daily, um, as you've seen in my video. But I also bought uh, three powers and three and a half powers, and I actually put those on and then I put these over it and my focal length is very close and I'm since I'm wearing them I can go right in I can pick this the, the right age cells um, and uh, really that's that helped me out absolutely immensely magnifying just glasses you can buy them on Amazon uh, they're just reading glasses they're just different levels of uh, magnification you can get them all the way up to four, four and a half, depending on your eyes. I'm older. My eyesight isn't the greatest anymore. I can barely pick out eggs um, without uh, magnifiers in a, in, a, in a colony. So for me, for grafting, this was a must. I had to. If you're younger, uh, women tend to have better eyesight too. Um, it's just, uh, um, you know, it's going to be easier for you. But if you're, if you're older... Uh, magnifiers that was a, that was a, that was a good key to me uh, the second was getting a tool that you get comfortable with now I tried several different tools um, some didn't work at all some did work to uh, some degree uh, the, the paintbrush uh, didn't work for me at all um, there was a zero 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 type paintbrush very very thin I tried that that didn't work uh, I also tried the um, JZBZ, um, I think it's a J-hook tool it's for getting cells out. Absolutely did not work whatsoever. I just broke the cell lining and whatnot. Uh, what did work for me was, believe it or not, these little Chinese grafting tools. Um, 
they work very well. Um, you know, they've got the little plunger on there with the uh, plastic tip. I sanded the tips down so, so that it, it bent in the cells. Um, this worked fairly well. Uh, I didn't, you know, didn't, you have to be like exact and get it in there. And, and you can get pretty, pretty handy and pretty quick with it uh, using this. But what worked the best for me and this took some getting used to, was this, and I'll, I'll show you here. This right here. This has got an end on it like that and an end on it like this. Now I used that uh, to pick up the uh, larvae, the easiest. That side didn't do it near as well um, for me, but I got very adept using the. It's a, called a German um, grafting tool. Um, for whatever reason, I was able to um, to really pick up the the larvae very very easily with this thing. Um, the hardest part, actually, the flat part was the one I used. Uh, the hardest part about this was uh, dislodging the larvae from this tool and if you get adept at it you will get the larvae literally just on the tip of this and then as you put it in your JZBZ cup it'll just stick to it and you just slide it backwards off of it and like I said practice makes perfect and this this I was able to do you know 30 cells in 15 minutes no problem uh, with this little tool uh, really worked, really worked great for me. Um, but getting handy and getting uh, the right age larvae was also, you know, my first attempt this year. Uh, I thought I was picking up a very, very, uh, the right age larvae. But in hindsight, looking back at the video I was looking at, I think I was, they were a little bit too old for me. Uh, my first round of, of uh, cells. I think I did 15, you know, in five minutes. Uh, got it done, put them in. The bees jumped on them right away, and I thought I had a whole bunch of success, but as it turned out, only two made it. Um, so uh, my second round, you know, I started, you know, I was, I was panicking because, you know, you, you find out, you know, after 10 days that you only got two when you were expecting, you know, 12 to 14 or something like that. And so you start panicking because you're running out of time. Literally up here, you know, we only have a short window to, uh, to graft and, and raise uh, quality queens. So, you know, and then I only have a small window of time available to myself to be doing this. If I had more time, I'd have been doing this all summer long, trust me. Um, so... Um, you know, getting the right age larvae uh, it, it is key. This my second round uh, went a whole lot better, and I ended up with. I think I I uh, did twenty. I did forty five cells, and I had like twenty eight to take, which was awesome. Um, and uh, I was I was absolutely ecstatic about that and uh, again here's the attention to detail you know like the set my second round I went in to my cell builder I, I went and got uh, from frames from resource hives and I shook them more bees into my cell builder to boost some nurse bees and uh, boom I had I had all these cells that were built and I was just ecstatic that this was going great and I and I was like you know I was getting ready to to uh, you know make my splits and do everything and right before I was going to pull them out I decided to pull my frame and see count exactly how many I had so I know how many splits you know because sometimes they tear a couple down whatever and I pulled it up and there wasn't a single queen cell there and what was the culprit my attention to detail lapsed and when I was shaking bees from my resource hives into that colony, I shook 
a mated queen in there, and she went and destroyed every single cell. I, I, I reiterate my comment about attention to detail. Um, you know, I, I looked at the frames. I mean, she's a green dot. I thought it was easy. I got, I got cocky. I looked, I looked. No queen shake. Well, she was probably buried underneath some bees, and I shook her in there. And, and she not only went in there, but she started laying in there, too, because, you know, when I went in there, I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And then here's all this brood all laid up. She just went to town. She was a laying queen. They accept her. She just went to town, killed all my queen cells. So lesson learned there. Uh, attention to detail. You know, I got to create some sort of a... Uh, shaker box to shake bees through the shaker box through a queen excluder just to make sure that when I'm when I'm adding brood to these uh, uh, to my starter colony that uh, there's no um, there's no queens in there because that'll ruin you know two weeks so now 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 we're talking now now I'm four weeks into it I still don't have any queen cells now um, I'll tell you another thing that um, that was attention to detail. I went and bought a uh, pretty expensive model of um, incubator from from Amazon. I read the reviews and just like everything on Amazon, you know, some of the reviews are good, some are bad. Blah 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 blah. You know, some people were ecstatic and and it worked out well for them. No beekeepers did though, but uh, so I bought this uh, this little. Uh, Oh, it sort of looks like a mini refrigerator, I guess, with a glass window and, and everything, and it's got three levels on it. And um, the temperature is in f degrees centigrade, and, and you adjust it, and it's, it, it doesn't do it like by points. It's just single degrees up, whatever. So when I set it up, I set it up, and I put my... I put a, a, a thermometer, a digital thermometer uh, temperature uh, probe on the center um, shelf just to make sure that the temperature up there for conversion matched what it was, and it wasn't. Um, so I adjusted the temperature, what was reading on there, so that I was getting roughly 92 degrees down there, but there was... It was amazing because there was such a rise and fall of temperature. It would drop down to 90 and then go up to 95. And, uh, and there was literally nothing that, you know, I, don't, I couldn't figure out what, what the deal was. But I got it, you know, I, I dropped it down to like 92 um, and a half, somewhere around there. That's where I wanted it. And I said, okay, if it goes up to 94, fine. If it goes down to 91, okay, but it'll still fluctuate between that. So I stuck my queen cells after I had I had grafted uh, one time that where I had a bunch take, and I stuck the, the cells ten days old into this incubator. And I waited and I waited, and you know, day sixteen rolled around and nothing was nothing emerged. Okay, and uh, and I put them all in roller cages, and you know, I was waiting for all of them all to emerge. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. Day seventeen rolled around and nothing emerged and I came home and I was just like something's just not right here so I uh, I grabbed one and I opened her opened the cell up and it was mush wasn't even a viable didn't even get to the didn't even get to the uh, you know like a, a it was still kinda like in a larval stage it wasn't really at a pupa stage and um, and then I opened cell after cell after cell, and um, they were all mush. And I could not figure out what the heck went wrong. And so I went and put my temperature probe up to the top shelf, which is where I put my queen cells. And the temperature up there was somewhere around 100 to 102 degrees, which means that the first day I ended up cooking those um, those larval, those larvae out, and they died probably within the first day, and so I lost all of them because 
the incubator that I had doesn't maintain a temperature from the bottom to the top and doesn't circulate air. And so I essentially bought a $170 end table, as it were. So, you know, live and learn with that. Since then, I've actually bought a an incubator from um, that, you know, one of my friends had that, that he has gotten to work uh, with his queen rearing and he's raised a lot of queens on it. So a um, lot of positivity uh, there going forward, but I won't know that until this year, until this next year. Um, and again, just attention to detail. If I'd have, if I'd have checked the temperature at the top, I would have known that, that the temperature of the top was too hot. Uh, so I didn't, you know, I, I checked the temperature in the middle thinking, but heat rises and it was hotter at the top than in the center. And uh, again, attention to detail. So that was another issue with that, that went wrong for me. Um, another issue that I occurred, I, I grafted another bunch of cells and they came out and, you know, I was pretty happy. I had, you know, 20 or so cells that had come out, uh, come out well. And so I left them in, in the uh, cell starter for a while rather than put them in a finisher. And the bees ended up uh, building Burkholm between all the cells. And... The burk home was very, very soft, as was the cells, and I was trying to remove the burk home, and literally, I, I was ended up destroying all the queen cells when I was trying to take out the, these. Uh, they weren't as hard peanuts like you find in swarm, in swarm colonies, so that was another issue that I had. Uh, I got to learn um, to take them out of my cell starter, put them in a cell finisher, or in an incubator that works. Uh, so that was another issue. Uh, I got a friend that does queen rearing and he puts foundation in. So they build wax on the foundation and not on his on his cells. So we'll have to try that, that little uh, routine out. Um, as you can tell, queen rearing is not for the faint of heart. It's for somebody that's got the time and pays attention to detail. Uh, I still managed to uh, to get a series of um, at my last actually my last series of um, grafting went well. I left one uh, grafted cell in my cell builder and allowed them to create a queen there, and it's doing really well. It's it's back there, and it's a very powerful nucleus colony right now going into winter. And um, the other. Um, the other ones, I, I think I had 20 of them, and eight of them ended up taking. Uh, they ended up getting mated and coming back and whatnot. And uh, actually, that's one behind me there. Um, there's a couple over over there that have uh, um, grafted. I got one there. So going into winter, I've got eight uh, grafted queens in colonies, in nucleus colonies. Uh, Preparing for winter, I have three colonies uh, that were from 2019 that are entering their um, second winter, which is fantastic. Two behind me, way 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 over there, and uh, one at the farm. Uh, so that's the three there, and then um, I have some swarm colonies that I caught this year, of course. And then I also have, um, uh, let's see, one, two, three colonies uh, of swarm cells that I split up. And those are actually, two of them are sitting there and one of them is over at the farm. Uh, so, and they're, right now they're doing okay. Hopefully it was late swarm um, splits that I made. And, you know, hopefully there's enough days out there that the queens can lay and um, build up some build up some brood uh, so that they can get a nice winter nest going for the for the year. Uh, need lots of bees, so just keeping my fingers crossed on those colonies because 
those colonies are actually from my most productive queen that I had, and I lost. Uh, you know, I lost four four colonies this year um, that swarmed, and I didn't I didn't get them. Um, they swarmed when I wasn't around, and they did it over at the farm, and uh, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get any of them. I'm disappointed that I lost the queens, but they were older queens, so um, you know, you live and learn with that. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I found really handy, actually, and you can get these. This is this is from DC's Gadgets. He makes these, and this doesn't cost much, eight bucks or something like that, fifteen dollars of shipping somewhere on there. But uh, it's a crafting wheel he made, and this is just a handy tool. I found it really handy to know, you know, when I grafted, when I'm expecting um, uh, them to uh, uh, be capped. Uh, you know, w when to put them in the incubator or the finisher uh, colony, and then um, when you want to put them in the nukes. And uh, so, you know, um, lots to uh, build on uh, and learn from this year. Uh, I have a couple of friends that um, were really successful, and this is part of my uh, upper Midwest beekeeping group uh, guys that get together and chat and we 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 talk back and forth about uh, successes and failures what's working for them what's not working for them and uh, you know I probably told them more more of my failures uh, which they're probably laugh at me about but that's okay uh, but I learned from them as well uh, my one friend Brad uh, from Decatur Ridge Bees he was really successful this year. He ended up selling 20 queens a week to a commercial guy. That's how many queens he was producing out of his small cell builders. And he does his cell builders almost identical to the way like a Richard Noel or Michael Palmer would. Uh, he's got nukes, a uh, four high stacked nuke uh, with bees. Now he didn't tell me if he, you know, takes brood from other colonies to build this, this three high. Uh, or this four high nuke, I, I, I'm not exactly sure, or if it's just a colony that he uses. But anyways, it's a queen right colony, and it, the top three uh, boxes are queen right, and the queen can go up in any one of the three boxes. The fourth box is the queenless part, and what he does is um, right before he's ready to graft, he um, takes the bottom three boxes and he moves it over to another location maybe 10 feet away and then drops that single down and then all the foragers coming back will fill up that nucleus that that nuke box with all you know, and he's got he had brood in there too so he's already got nurse bees in there already and then um, when he grafts, he puts everything in there with all those bees that are coming back. And, uh, and he produces, I think, somewhere around, you know, 30 to 40, you know, just depending on the day. Uh, queens every week, sells 20 of them. I know his remaining ones he, he keeps or sells to other people. Um, so really, really awesome. Um, and it's work, it, works, it worked for him all summer long. Another thing he does that after the cells are 48 hours old, uh, he ends up uh, bringing back the, uh, the big colony, puts it back in its place, its original location, and he sets that box over the queen excluder, and that uh, now becomes a queen right finishing colony. And, um, you know, he finishes the cells till about day 10 in there, then pulls them out, puts them in an incubator, and on day 14, uh, the uh, commercial beekeeper comes and gets his cells, and uh, the rest he leaves in there to emerge, or he puts them in, in um, splits and, and creates grafts from that. So, um, very, very successful um, way he's done it. He's, he's brand new at it too. Um, I'm not sure, I think this is his first year doing it, and uh, he found a system that worked for him. Uh, again, you know, you need to have attention to detail and you need to have the time to do it. Uh, so I, I am still very, very pro uh, 
self-sustainability um, and grafting queens, creating your own queens is the way to go about it. I am very, very, very adamant um, that that is the, the way to go if you, uh, if you want to do this in any, if you only have a couple of hives in it, then don't even bother this with, then don't even bother with doing it this way. But you know, for somebody that wants to get 15, 20, 30 or more colonies, Raising your own queens is the way to do it. Um, like I said, next year, can't wait. Uh, this is probably, my colonies are probably the best, um, healthiest, the largest, and, uh, and the most fed up they've been uh, since I've been doing this. Uh, so I can't wait to uh, woo, get through this year. Needless to say, I'm a very strong proponent of uh, raising your own queens. I think that's the best way to be self-sustainable. I think that if any beekeeper, hobby beekeeper, uh, that has any seriousness about them should strive to be self-sustainable. Um, you know, we're, we still got to bring in genetics from the outside. Hopefully, if you can get in with a group of people in your local area, uh, you can trade Queens and they're doing the same thing. Uh, I belong to two, two local groups here. One, uh, the leadership doesn't really stress or believe in um, self-sustainability, I guess, or grafting or things like that. Um, they promote buying packages and and uh, and uh, nucleus colonies every year, and uh, you know. I just can't see that as a very viable way of going about doing things. Uh, another, this is the other group, um, they have a very opposite philosophy where they are really into, um, you know, uh, prom doing a kind of a dual thing. You know, for new, newer beekeepers, they're going to have to buy colonies and uh, uh, packages. Um, so you have to kind of have both. You can't just say no to one or the other. but. Uh, but they also promote, uh, you know, raising queens. The club even purchases uh, breeder queens, and they raise queens and uh, breeder uh, raise queens to uh, to um, get open mated here in the in the North Woods. Uh, they also uh, that 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 has a, a very large group of um, treatment free beekeepers um, that I don't quite agree with, but. Um, you know, uh, it is what it is. People can do what they want with their own bees. But, uh, yeah, so that was, uh, you know, some of the things that I ran into this year that, um, um, well, I can just do nothing but learn from, and I can't wait till next year to, uh, to get started on all this. Uh, as you can kind of see behind me, the bees are still active. Um, even though it was 30 something degrees last night, but uh, fall was upon us, long, long winter. So anyways, uh, you know, oh, I, I wanted to say that if you're a, a hobby beekeeper and um, you know, you've been doing this for a few years and wanting to expand and become self-sustainable and maybe you have already started grafting and you're into that, um, and you're an upper Midwest guy uh, from, you know, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, even Ohio. Uh, you know, I, we have a, a group of a group that we get together and we just talk. Uh, we do video chats uh, and discuss everything that's worked for us, everything that's you know failed for us, and um, you get ideas from each other uh, as to which direction. You know, we, we all read, we're all big video addicts, uh, YouTube video addicts, so we see what somebody else is doing and try, and so this guy tries this, this guy tries this, and we just, just discuss it, and it's kind of fun. And we're not there to be critical of anybody. Um, you know, we're there to share ideas. Uh, and it's, it's a very, very, very small group, 
and uh, it's also on Facebook too but again it's the same people that do the video chats as we let in the Facebook group so it's not a very big uh, group and again we try not to be critical whatsoever of each other you know you shouldn't be doing that or blah 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 whatever uh, so we just try to be supportive and uh, bounce ideas uh, off each other so if that's something that you're interested in you know I'm always looking for um, new people new ideas uh, to come into the group uh, participation is the key I, I, I it doesn't do us much good to have somebody in the group that doesn't participate and anonymity doesn't work either uh, you know we're, we're we all know each other uh, know each other's names and and where we live and all that kind of stuff so if you're into anonymity and fake names and things like that uh, that's just not who we are as a group um, but like I said it just you know we get together once a month or so and just talk bees uh, mostly about queen rearing, uh, mite treatments, uh, things of that nature, what's working, uh, how to get your bees through winter. It's another big, big topic. Some of our guys don't have the winners that, that I have here, and some of them have worse winners than I have. So you learn kind of like a wide range. Uh, try to keep it to guys in the upper Midwest because no offense to anybody down south, but you don't know what a winner is. Um, not like it is up here. So, but if you're interested, shoot me an email at bearcreekhoneywi at gmail.com and we'll add you to the group list. And, um, you know, if you participate, then you can stay a member of the group and, and participate as you want, you know. Um, so, feel free. So, anyways, it's just too nice of a day not to be sitting outside enjoying this. It's just so fantastic it's i just love days like this but wish it wasn't the end of the season wish it was the beginning of the season so i could kind of do have a do-over but till next time take care happy beekeeping and remember all beekeeping is local right buddy mm. stay